All right, so my name's Dave. Uh, I also work at Citizen Ed along with these three up here who you've already heard from probably. Um, last Citizen Ed developer you'll hear, from, you'll hear from today. So, all right, let's get into this. What am I talking about today? Today I want to talk to you about fuzzy search in PureScript, specifically modeling fuzzy search in PureScript. Chris's talk was pretty, pretty heavy. I'm still kind of dizzy from it. So figured, you know, maybe, maybe I'll go a little bit lighter and we won't, we won't get too much into implement, implementation details. We'll just start at, we'll just stick with the types, the data types and modeling, uh, modeling our, our types in a useful way, right? So first of all, why? why? Why did I implement a fuzzy search uh, algorithm or library in PureScript? That's why they pay you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. Yeah, but um, a, 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 the longer version of that, <laughs> if that's not satisfying enough, uh, as you might have gathered from, from uh, previous talks, uh, we are currently in the process of migrating our Angular uh, web app to PureScript. And we decided to do this in hard mode and just roll everything ourselves instead of you know, wrapping available like components uh, that are available in JavaScript and not in you know, PureScript. Uh, instead of wrapping them in a FFI layer, we, we, we said, we want, we want PureScript all the way down. Right? We, want, we want that control. We want that safety. So that, that involved building our own type ahead. Type ahead is one of the most common components we use throughout our app. And we use it all over the place in forms, you know, searching list views, uh, searching through data. Uh, so that, that's really a core piece of our, or component of our, of our web app. So we really needed a good type ahead and you can't have a good type ahead without decent fuzzy search. So, First, I, I, I was searching through, you know, pursuit, looking around for, for a good fuzzy search out, like library, and there were none. <laughs> so, guess I guess I had to roll my own. So, so that's how so that's how I ended up here. So, next question is how 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 do I build a useful fuzzy search, right? Well, let's let's think of what we need, what what we need to implement. Well for, well, for our, our use case is a type ahead, right? So what sorts of things, what sort of behavior do we want uh, from our fuzzy search, right? So at the most basic example, we have a search string and we have a list of data, a list of strings or what have you to search through, right? And we want to figure out which of those strings, which, which of our data is the best match for the search. Right, so what? So how how do we how do we take that string and then pr present our data in a useful manner to the user? First, we might want to sort it, right? Sort by best match. Uh, next, we might want to filter if 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 there aren't any good matches or or half of them are, or most of them aren't good matches. We want to filter those out. We don't want to, you know, pollute our results with 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 garbage. And last of all, we want to highlight. We right. We want to be able to say this is the parts of, of the you know string that match your term, right? That's very, that's useful to the user to quickly find you know what they what it is they were exactly searching for. Okay, so let's step through these each at a time, right? How do we model you know? Our needs for sorting, right? So, what's, what what do we need in order to sort? We need some way to rank our matches. Say this one is better than this other one, right? How can we do that? One idea is to measure the similarity between each string, right? Like, how close is this string to this other string, right? And there are some algorithms that that already offer this sort of functionality. One is one of the most popular ones is the Levenstein distance, also known as edit distance, right? And what that, what that gives you is 
basically, um, it tells you the number of transformations or edits required to go from one string to another, right? So uh, let, let's, let's sort of, well, is that, is that clear to anyone or does anyone want me to explain Levenstein distance a little better? Okay, so we're good. All right, so let's, let's see if this could work for us. Let's say we have a search string, foobar. Is that readable? That looks really small up there. Can you guys read that? Okay. Um, all right, so let's say we have a, a search string, foobar, and a list of strings we want to search through, right? These happen to already be ordered uh, in the way we want because I was too lazy to randomize them. But let's, let's go ahead and apply our, uh, and sort them by their, edit distance and see what we get. OK, that's not very useful. Let's, let's add some annotations. All right, so here we see, here we have a better idea of what's going on. We can, we can see why they're ordered this way. You know, they're sorted by their edit distance. And at first, that might, that might seem like a decent heuristic, right? The second one is pretty, it's pretty close to what we're looking for. The first one, obviously, is a perfect match, so it definitely belongs up at the top. But if you look at the bottom one there, that really should be a little bit higher, don't you think? If you're, if you're typing in an autocomplete and you type in foobar, there's a pretty good chance you want that last one there, and you don't want to have to type the whole thing out, right? The, then you know, our fuzzy search is kind of useless. So, OK. Similarity or edit distance itself is, is, is a good start, but it, it's not going to work all by itself. So to figure out what exactly is going to work, we, 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 need, to, we need to do a little more digging, right? We, we need to, let's, let's take a look, let's look through each of our, of our uh, strings and see if we can figure out you know, a, a certain precision by which we can separate them out, right? To say, well, not objectively, subjectively, because that's what heuristics are. Uh, this one's better than this other one, right? So this is a perfect match. Obviously, we want it at the top, right? This one, it's damn near a perfect match, right? Like, sure, we have a bunch of extra characters that make it not as good a match as the previous one, but it, it's pretty close. Right. What about what about this one? It's a much shorter edit distance, but it actually, you know, it it breaks up our words. Right. It's it's incomplete. Uh, so it it feels not as good of a match as the one above it, but just by a little. Right. It, it's still pretty good. What about this one? Right. You would think, but their search when they when a user is searching, they usually they're not going to they don't usually start you know, in the middle of a sentence. They might sometimes, but it, it seems less likely. So I feel like we could penalize this a little more than the previous, the previous strings, right? And what about, what about this one? So most of the time when you're, say you're searching for a taco truck, you're not gonna start typing at co, right? You're not gonna search for co truck. You're probably gonna st search for taco truck. So it, if our, if our match starts in the middle of a word, it's, it's probably less likely what they're looking for. I think we could bump that down. And then finally, this is a mess, right? Unless, unless, some of you, if, unless your keyboard's broken or like you're really bad at typing, you're, 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 this probably isn't how you search for what you're looking for. And then finally, yeah, this is nonsense, right? This, this is no, nowhere near what we originally searched for. Even though the edit distance is is really small, right? With with Levenstein distance, this is an edit distance of three. We just need to change those three characters, and we're pretty much there. Okay, so now we have a better idea of of different levels of severity for uh, our distances, right? Like like distance was a good start, but we have different categories or orders of magnitude that we want to assign the penalty for, like depending on where that distance it is found, right? If it's at the end of our match or before our match in the middle, right? Those should each carry a higher penalty. So let's, let's go through each of our matches and, and sort of, sort of set, you know, 
go through each of these orders of magnitudes one at a time. Our, our first one's a perfect match. Okay, that, that's, that's cool. So this one has a distance of 7. All right, so we can, we can add that penalty here. But then we, here we encounter a, a new order of magnitude in severity, right? Like this is, this, the, the, the location of this uh, um, edit, right? This, uh, this unmatched character is, is worse than, than the previous case, right? So we wanna, we wanna, we wanna find some way to say, even though this distant, this penalty is only one, which is less than the seven before it, it is necessarily a greater penalty. So we're, we're just gonna add a new, a new penalty ranking, right? That says this, this one's worse than, than the, the one in the other place, right? And so we could just kind of do that all the way down, keep adding new orders of magnitudes until we have a clear like separation uh, of how one is worse than the other, right? Does this, does this make sense to anyone? What were oh. the multiple numbers for? On the first one, when you first evaluated that foo bar, it was distance zero, right? Yeah. And the next one, you had distance zero seven. Right. What does that represent? OK. So we have a different position for, for wherever uh, the, un, the unmatched characters show up, right? So if they show, in the second example, if they show up after our match, then that's not as good. We're going to penalize that because it's not as good as a perfect match above, but we're going to assign it the lowest penalty we can because it's not that bad, right? It's like all, all it means is they didn't completely match uh, this string, right? Because they, maybe they just didn't finish typing. It's not that bad relative to the other... Um... Relative to, to where these other uh, errors show up, right? Like. Uh, Unmatches. So, so if we go to the next one, this this one is we're actually penalizing the fact that they we don't have a complete word, right? So they didn't search for food bar; they searched for foo bar, right? So it, since it's not matching the entire word, we're gonna we're gonna penalize that slightly worse than just penalizing characters at the end. And and for the, each of these, we we. We increment our our, our, pen, our like the severity of our penalty because it's more like it's less likely that they were searching for this string at least according to to our best guess right like this is this is the system we came up with for for our search because it made sense for our type of heads right so, so this zero zero like that second one it's mm -hmm. zero, 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 seven. Mm -hmm. that that's a function of only that foobar bass buzz. Yeah. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the distance score we're assigning to that string when matched against our search string. Okay. Right. Whereas if we come down to the bottom one here, we're assigning it a distance. So the four is because there are four missing characters, right? Oh. Like that's, that's, that's pretty bad. That's like, that's like the most severe penalty you could get. Like, we actually didn't match this character, right? So we're going we're gonna to add uh, a distance of four to, to that category. And then the next, uh, the next place is a one because, um, I don't remember. I might be wrong, actually. Okay. Um, so these, like, these oh, oh, sorry. The, this, this, one, this, this one is because there's one unmatched character. Like this, this penalty is specifically for uh, the number of characters that break up a match, right? So, so the second to last is a good example, right? Um, there's like five characters in between. Like we're, we're actually just breaking up the words, right? There's, no, mm -hmm. there's not a very continuous like match of, st mm -hmm. of strings, mm -hmm. right? So we're, we're assigning a penalty for that. Mm -hmm. Is that? Okay, so these, these are, each of the numbers represents a different yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And each is an order of magnitude worse than the next place over, right? So oh, okay. So even so let's say uh, this so this is a 4, but it's lower than this 5. 
right? But because it's one place over, it, it's a more severe penalty, right? Even though it's less than five, right? That makes sense. That's a good idea. Cool. Uh, are, each, sorry, are each one of those numbers uh, separate, separate checks? So it looks like Levenstein is, is on the, the far right now. Um, are, are you going to go into what those are? Um, they're all edit distance. They're all sort of Levenstein, just broken out into where uh, the edit is occurring. Like, like this, the, on the second line, the edit is occurring after our match, right? Um, so it's not as severe as uh, the, third the third one where the edit distance is, uh, is found after one of our words, but in the same word, right? So I, I didn't name these out, but if I were to, uh, the, like the second line, that would be like a uh, suffix or, well, I don't know if you guys want me to name them out. Would, it, would anyone find that useful? Or should we, should we keep going? All right. All right, so we could keep going. So, okay. We ha so we have a way to model our, our rankings, right? So, so how, how do we actually do that in code? Pretty simple. We just define a, a data type and parameterize it by six ints, one for each level of severity. Right, and how do we actually store it on that? Right. Well, I just gave you a sneak peek. That's all we have to do. The beauty of PureScript is, yes, yes. right. All we have to do is is derive an instance of ORD, and we can compare. Exact. Then the comparison works exactly how we want it to. Right. Each, each. Uh, each uh, what position of the int is is uh, higher uh, it is higher than than the next one, right? So so it automatically order sorts the exact way we want it to without doing anything else. That's that's kind of nice, I think. Any questions on sorting before I move on? It's a little ugly, but. <laughs> I, I thought about I thought about aliasing or like naming them, and then I was like, well, that's just gonna look even bigger, bigger. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not that beautiful, but the way it works, I find kind of beautiful, and and just like just being able to derive, you know, an instance of ord, and it works exactly how how I wanted it to without any extra work. I thought that was pretty great. Okay, so we, we got past like the chunk of it. Now, now let's move on to our, our next problem is filtering, right? We need some sort metric by which to filter, right? Can we use distance again? Well, let's, let's look at it. Does, this, does that look like, what are you gonna, what are you gonna filter on if you, if you use distance? It, it, it doesn't doesn't feel very ergonomic, does it? Like we could we could say, you know, the penalty, the distance in this place has to be less than, you know, for an example, it has to be less than five. Uh, but if they type two letters in and those two letters are completely wrong, the edit distance is still only going to be two, right? So that's not it's not a very good metric. We want something that's more of like a ratio or a percentage, right? So like we want to be able to say at least this percentage of characters need to match in order uh, for it to show up in our results, right? It's it's a it's a fuzzy search, so so you know some some fuzzy autocompletes or fuzzy searches are more forgiving than others. So and we want we want some sort of flexibility there, right? So it turns out there's a data type that represents what we want exactly. We have the rational, right, which is basically a way of saying, you know, this, you know, splitting up things into ratios or percentages, right? So this seems pretty clear to everyone, I'm guessing. Okay, so what happens if we apply, uh, apply uh, this type rational to our list of strings? Well. Basically everything's good, good enough except for that last one over there, which is only 
like a one third match, right? So so what this saying what this is saying is that for the top uh, six, the uh, every character was mashed at least somewhere in the string, and uh, and for the last one, you know, one out of three, or specifically two out of six, uh, were matched, and the reason so. The reason this is more useful than distance is we're, we're, we're trying to solve different problems, right? Like, like sorting, we needed some way to say, to rank, like, is this better than this, right? Is this result better than this result? That's not exactly what we're doing here. Here we're saying, is this good enough to even be shown, right? So, so, so we, want, we want a different metric, and I think this, this gives us what we want, right? We, like, we have more control. With, with this, right? So this data set isn't all that useful, so, so I, let's come up with a, a better data set to show how useful it is, right? So, so here we have a use case for, you know, a perfect match to five, six of a match all the way down to no matches at all. And this shows us that, you know, it gives us an idea of where we might want to set our cutoff, right? Like, like we have to match at least half the characters or you know more than two thirds of the characters, right? Th this this seems a little more useful, a little more ergonomic for filtering, I think, than than distance did. Cool. So how would we use that? Well, I'm sure you're all familiar with the filter function. It just takes a predicate function that works on any a and an array of a and filters that array down to a new array of A, right? So our predicate function would just look something like this, pretty simple. It takes a rational and, and you know, says is this, more, is this higher than two thirds? If so, we're good, right? Otherwise, we're, let's filter it out. Cool, so that's, that's filtering, that's pretty clear, right? And any questions on that? No? Here, right. let's move on. Last is highlighting. This one's, this one's pretty simple. All we need is a way to match highlighted characters, right? These characters didn't match, these characters did. We need some way to split those up. So, right. So how do we do that? Well, one way to do it would just be to put all the unmatched, you know, ha create a array of ethers where the le you know, lefts are, are unmatched and rights are matched characters, right? We just break, break up our strings on where they did and didn't match. It looks something like this, right? That makes sense, right? That's pretty useful. So if we can return this, everyone clear on that? Okay, so rights are all the things that are good matches, but the things that are not. Exactly. How do you choose what to do with the space? Um, that's yeah. up. That's really up to how you implement the, implement the algorithm. Um, my, the algorithm I implemented uh, puts the space in the left unless it's like a perfect match, right? So uh, I really I didn't I left a little bit out of the distance thing. One thing one thing my algorithm does is it 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 searches recursively through your pattern. First, it tries to match the entire thing, right? Because that's going to be the best result. Then it breaks it up into words and tries to match individual words. And then it bre if for any words that it couldn't match, it then breaks up those words into characters and recursively tries to match each of those characters. So uh, the distance is a little more complicated, but I didn't, I didn't feel like that was necessary to show here. Um, but anyway, so uh, depending on where you are in that recursion, uh, the space might appear on the left or right, but it, it really doesn't matter because <laughs> you know, a bold space doesn't look any different from an unbold space. Um, okay, so that's, this is how we can represent, uh, you know, our, our strings in a way that makes it easy to highlight. And this, this is an example of a function for highlighting on those match strings, right? Basically, we, we map over our, our array if it's a left, so that's an unmatched, uh, that's an unmatched string, so we just wrap that up in a text, so right? Pretty simple. Okay, so tying it all together, right? So we have, we have a way to filter, sort, and highlight our results. 
right? So how do we combine them all up? So this is how I chose to combine them all up. I have a new custom data type. This is, this is what my matching function returns when you, know, you, pass it a, you pass it a string to search for, and it gets you know, a string to compare it against, and this is the result. You, you know, we keep a reference to the original string in case you need to do anything with that. Otherwise, we provide you a distance, ratio, and segments, so you can you know, do some combination of sorting, filtering, and highlighting. All right? Nice. Cool. Great. Well, hold on. What if we want to search something other than strings, right? Like, this, this would work great on strings, but it's not usually what you're working with, right? Usually you're working with some sort of data type, maybe a record or, or you know, a sum type or, you know, some dates that you, you want to search through. How would we use those? Hmm. Like, what if you have a record with, like, a first name and last name, and you want to be able to search through both the first name and the last name, right? One possible solution is, you know, you just provide a function that concats all the fields you want to search through uh, into one string, and you search through that. But hold on, that kind of just, that just, then our, our distance just gets thrown out the window, right? Like, if you can con concat first name and last name into one string, then that fucks up the, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that that just throws a, you know all the work we did out the window because if you know say say you're searching for Davis right uh, it, it, if you type in D A V I S and and Davis is the last name you're searching for you're more likely to get Davids than Davis because the the Distance is gonna, you know, heuristics are all going to be messed up. So, so we need something a little, a little better than that, right? So, what I came up with is, is this. Well, this doesn't tell you that much. This is just basically the data structure we're returning. But um, let, let, let's skip ahead a little bit. So this is this is the function that takes, you know, the search string and the string you're, you're trying to match it against and rolls it up into, into this useful data type. So what if we want to make this a little more polymorphic, right? In that case, you could provide a function from your polymorphic type to a string map of strings, and then a string you're trying to search for, and your polymorphic type that you want to match that string against. And, what, and then what uh, this, algorithm, this function can do, your function, uh, it can basically run the same search over each string in your string map, right? So, you know, that, that's, so, okay. We have, what, everyone's familiar with a string map, I assume, right? It's basically like a hash map, or like a JavaScript object, right? It's just, uh, it's a map specialized to string. Um, and the reason, the reason I did this, like it's up to you what the keys are. Essentially you could say, so I have a string map of, na of first name and last name, and, and now you, you get to search through the first name and last name, and with whatever, and you know, then my function will, or algorithm will decide, uh, we'll, well, okay, we'll run that uh, search on either one, and whichever is a better match, it will, it will take that. It will take that match as the final result, right? So, if it if it didn't find anything in the first name, found something in the last name, it's just going to use the results from the last name and say, "Here's the best distance I found. Here's the best ratio I found," and you do with it as you will, right? So, what about the segments one? Well, we can't really assume. We're not, you know, we can't really assume which keys are useful to you, and we can't combine. We don't want to combine them because yeah, we, we can't make any assumptions of your rendering, right? So we're just going to use the same string map format that you provided and say, okay, here's our segments in a string map. Now, you can, if you wanted to display the first name or the last name or the email, that's up to you, right? You could use it however you want. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it's kind of like uh, folding, folding in that string map. Uh, yeah, like folding 
Free exactly. And, and with the max monoid. Right. Max yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually, yeah, how I'm doing it. OK. So that's it. We've modeled our fuzzy data. Let's, let's see it in action. So this is, this is the type of head we've built that uses the fuzzy search. And you can sort of get an idea. It's pr pretty decent, right? I th we're pretty happy with it. And uh, that's it. Any, any questions? How big of a list can you search through? It's a good question. Right. It also, like I, I'm working on a day picker that uses this, and I searched. Right now, I'm searching through three years worth of dates, just like just to see, and, and it seems to work. So I don't know. Like uh, I didn't show you the implementation, and honestly, it might not be like the most performant. If if anyone wants to check it out and and, and sees the, uh, I kind of like I'm doing something really stupid. Feel free to make a PR. Here is very welcome, but uh, yeah, the top the top GitHub there is uh, is the fuzzy search library. The second one, Ocelot, that's our uh, UI system that uses that's where we built our type ahead, and it's using uh, the fuzzy search. Um, any any other questions? Oh yeah, um, how did you get because uh, like let's see, I'm, I'm, I'm presuming that you search re records from some database table, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, do you first take that search string, like foobar, and put it into a SQL query? And then you get everything that has a lot of oh. distance of, like, whatever. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, we're not using this on the back end. We're using this, like, on the front end. So, so any, any, any sort of s search that we're doing from, like, for remote data, we're, we're not really going to use this for it. This is more for, for like, uh, static or like, you know, like say we have some paginated data. We didn't actually search for it. We just have like, uh, you know, a, a, a list, of, a huge list of data. Maybe like, you know, we work in social media. So say we have a list of Facebook pages that we have access to and we want to search through them. They're, they're already on the client, so we don't need to make a request for them. We just, we just want to search through like maybe thousands that we already have uh, available to us or maybe hundreds, I don't know. Um, that depends. So that's that's when we would use this. Okay, that makes sense. It, it's for the client side, yeah. I mean, I'm sure if our pure backend was in pure script, that I mean, maybe, but. <laughs> Also include the ID. Also include the, you know, the, the name of the campaign or kind of and number of, of attributes. Yeah, and, and then you get back that string map, and you kind of like, okay, how do I render this? Like, like what, what actually? Like, uh, this is really good. It's kind of interesting. I, I could show you like, uh, you could do some pretty interesting thing with dates as well, um, which I could show you real quick. So if you want to see a few different use cases, you can just check out, check out the, the test here. So I was playing, I've been playing around just very recently with like using this for searching through dates, right? So I, I yeah, let's see. How's that? Am I good? So I have this function to turn a date into a string map of things that, of like different formats that a user might want to search for, right? Um, and this isn't super clear <laughs> uh, on what that is, but basically it allows them to to search different date formats, and we can do a pretty good job of of like finding the the specific date that they were searching for, just based on like that. You could type in Wednesday, and it, and this will find you the the soon, the nearest Wednesday to today. Uh, or you could type in like July 8 and it will it will find the next July 8 right or or you can add like a year so so 
this is actually pretty powerful, um, I think. Anything else? Uh, the slide or? Uh, it's a, uh, how do I, oh, yeah, it's right here. Pursuit of fuzzy? Yeah, if you, if you go on to pursuit and search for fuzzy, that's the only thing that will show up. Thank you.